Welcome to part 2 of our snake dissection. For part 1, check the link in the description below. So let's take a look at the internal anatomy. Lie the snake ventral or belly side up, and start cutting at the cloaca, right here, since it's easiest to start there. Cut up the snake's body with scissors all the way up to the neck, making sure to keep the blade angled up so that you don't damage any of the internal structures. When done, lift back the skin and pin the flaps down. All the organs of the snake are wrapped in this cling wrap-like transparent film called a peritoneum. We humans actually also have a peritoneum. And we can see that if I pull, all of the organs can be easily detached from the skin. So as you can see, all the organs are detached from the skin. We won't show the entire footage, but we'll also cut and peel away the peritoneum. The really interesting thing about snake anatomy is that they have to fit all of these organs into such a narrow, thin space. Because of that, all of their organs look kind of elongated, and a lot of organs that would usually appear side by side, for example the kidneys, are staggered instead. So let's go through all of the organs. First, let's start with the lungs. Starting with the lungs, or should I say lung singular, because the snake only really has one functional lung, right here, due to the constrained space in its body. And here, leading up to the lung, you can see the trachea. So all along the trachea, you can see these little rings of hard cartilage, and these rings of cartilage are necessary to prop the trachea open and ensure a clear passageway for air at all times. You can actually feel these cartilage rings in your throat as well. If you press your hand against the front of your throat, you might be able to feel the cartilage rings in your trachea. It's important to note that the esophagus doesn't have these cartilage rings, since unlike the trachea, you don't need the esophagus to be open all the time. Snakes also don't really breathe in the same way that we do. In humans, breathing occurs when the diaphragm, which is a muscle under your lungs, pulls downwards and pulls the lungs down with it, expanding the lungs and sucking in outside air. Snakes, on the other hand, don't have a diaphragm, so instead they use the muscles around their ribcage, which are here and here on the other side, to squeeze and pull their lung to breathe air in and out. And now I'll cut open the lung. So when I cut open the lung, you can see that it's actually hollow. 
human lungs don't look like this. They look more like a sponge. And if you watch our pluck video, which is linked in the description below, you can get a better feel for what that looks like. Anyway, in the snake lung, you can see it's actually hollow, with this really cool honeycomb-like structure on the inner surface. This honeycomb is the actual gas exchange surface, so it's lined with a lot of tiny blood vessels called capillaries that absorb oxygen and expel carbon dioxide. This honeycomb-like structure provides a lot of surface area to facilitate gas exchange. Now let's take a look at the heart. So moving the lungs aside, this is the heart right here. And since there is no diaphragm, you can see that the heart can actually move around quite a bit. This is important because when a snake swallows large prey, the heart needs to move around that prey as it goes down the esophagus. You can also see the heart is encased in this shiny protective layer called a pericardium. We'll cut and peel open this pericardium to get a better look at the heart inside. With the exception of crocodiles, which have a four-chambered heart, all reptiles, including snakes, have a three-chambered heart. This means that it has two atria, but only one ventricle. As you can see, one atria right here, and if you flip it over, a second atria, and the large yellow structure right here is the ventricle. The disadvantage of this system is that oxygenated and deoxygenated blood can mix, which reduces the efficiency. In humans and other mammals, the heart has four chambers, which allows for the complete separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So now let's look at the liver. So this large brown organ right here is the liver. And you can see it leads through the heart through this big vein, which would be the portal vein. The liver is the ultimate multitasker. It produces bile, stores and releases glucose, detoxifies blood, and etc. And now we'll also cut open the liver. So from the cross section, you can see that the liver is made of formless, slightly squishy glandular tissue. Now let's take a look at the digestive system. So this is the esophagus right here, which leads from the mouth to the stomach. As you may expect, since snakes swallow their prey whole, the esophagus is very wide and somewhat stretchy, as you can see here. And at the end of the esophagus, you can find the stomach, which is right here. And we'll cut open the stomach as well. So here, because I cut open the stomach, you can see the inside. The inner surface lining of the stomach has cells that secrete acids and enzymes into the stomach. Snakes need to digest things like bones and fur because they swallow their prey whole, so their stomach acid and enzymes are particularly strong. The digestion process also takes a long time, so snakes can take days to weeks digesting a single meal. So here you can see that the stomach leads into the intestine, which is the beige structure, and all of this coiled up is the intestine. And the intestine eventually leads down all the way to the cloaca, which we saw before. The intestine functions in absorbing nutrients from the snake's food. After the nutrients are absorbed, they're sent to the bloodstream, where it passes through the liver before going to the heart. Snakes have a slow metabolism, 
so they can go for a week or two after a single meal. And here, these yellowish orange things wrapping the lower half of the organs are the fat bodies. So unlike humans, who store our fats in small pockets around the body, snakes and other reptiles store them in these structures called fat bodies. They look like finger-like projections, and they store fat as energy reserves for when the snake is running low on energy. So you can see each of these fat bodies look like little finger-like projections. So now looking at the reproductive organs, you can see that there's a testis right here. This one. And a little down, there's a second testis right here. So this one. So these two are the testis. Like I mentioned before, you would usually expect to find the two gonads right next to each other, side by side, but in snakes, they're actually staggered, so one is slightly above the other. And this is because snakes are so long that the two gonads can't be located side by side. And here at the very end are the two kidneys. So this is the first kidney, and this is the second kidney. Again, usually the kidneys are side by side, but because the snake is so narrow, in the case of snakes, one kidney, so this one, is slightly above the other, so this one. And the kidneys filter the blood to produce urine. So that's the end of our snake dissection. Thanks for watching. Here's a fun fact about snakes to send you on your way. Although we commonly think of snakes as laying eggs, many species of snakes actually give live birth. Some examples being boa constrictors, anacondas, sea snakes, and even garter snakes, which is the species of snake we dissected today. Thanks again, and please subscribe if you found our video helpful. It really helps the channel reach a wider audience.